Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. Um, uh, yes, apologies for uh, uh, lateness, and I uh, doubt anyone's actually watching this because it's not on um, my group. Uh, it's on my personal page. But uh, anyway, I'll post it across to my um, uh, group later on today. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure what goes on here. I don't know if the rules have changed, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't do a, a live video direct to my group. So anyway, there it goes. So welcome to 2022 Yoga Solutions Live. Uh, I'm Mark Jack with Eva, and I'm here to share the best of what I have with you. Um, I, I like to. I, I just want to get my information out there. I, I want people to un, to see things uh, the way that I see them because it makes life simple <laughs> or simpler anyway <clears throat> and um yeah so i come on every week and I'm, uh yeah if you want to work with me direct then come and work with me direct but um my main mission is to get this work out there so here i am and i got a question this week from uh, jen in the states uh, thank you jen so what did she say here um the groin hip flexors are a little grippy lately. Um, I feel a bit tight in standing and still a bit tight after some gentle lunges to try and open up. Hmm. Uh, she says, I bet my pronoun master will mellow out, mellow out the pelvis. Yeah, well, yeah, it will. Um, but that's the thing where I get people to engage with lying down. Um, <clears throat> Perhaps I should do that. Well, yes, do do that, Jen. Um, do that to to relieve the grippiness. But there's a there's a there's a deeper issue here. If, if you're feeling the groin and the hip flexors basically gripping, they're they're doing a job. And um, the idea of doing doing something like lunges to uh, relieve them. Yeah, uh, it's kind of it's kind of how most of us think of yoga. As in, um, I've got tight hips. I want to do something that opens the hips. Um, that sort of makes sense. Except what we think of as opening is usually a, an attack on the area. Um, so you know, if if your hip flexors, if your adductors are busy. Um, being tense, being grippy, there's a, there's a good reason for that. And uh, it, it, it brings to mind a sort of the way we look at the joints. We, we, we tend to look at joints locally. Why, why, and the question is, why would the hip flexors be tense when you're standing? Well, um, I, I, th I think I want to kind of break it down into seeing how we think about joints today. Um, and I'll move on to a practical at some point. And I think the, the, it, it's not entirely wrong, but we tend to think of joints in a kind of two dimensional kind of way. Um, you know, a, a joint is a surface, a joint is a surface, whether it's, um, like a big mobile joint like the knee or whether it's, um, um, ball and socket joint like the hip, you know, but, but uh, we, we, we tend to think of the joints two dimensionally in that there's the, the stuff on this side of it and the stuff on that side of it. And when there's imbalance, we tend to try and s strengthen that to make, uh, for example, if, if you're over here, the stuff on the stuff on the side of the joint that's being the side that's pulled apart will be busy gripping to hold it together and the stuff on the side where it's being compressed will be gripping busy trying to stop it from moving anymore so there'll be tension around the joint in a kind of two-dimensional fashion uh, there's the stuff in front and the stuff behind and uh, with a knee joint for example um, when that's opening up, uh, the front is opening up, you'll feel the muscles at the front holding on for dear life to stop you from falling over, the weight from falling over, and the stuff at the back will be holding on to stop you from slipping, you see? 
So, <clears throat> and, and this is how we kind of um, think of the joint, especially when there's a joint problem. Because, you know, if there's a misalignment, then function is going to be restricted. And we tend to think of changing the, the musculature around the joint to sort that out. But that musculature is really, it, it, it's meant to be sort of under proprioceptive uh, control, as in um, not, um, uh, well, yeah, no, it is proprioceptive. You know, if, if, you're, if you're in imbalance, the muscles around the joint will grip proprioceptively, as in it, they will do that automatically to stop you from falling apart or falling over. Um, why am I going into this? Well, <clears throat> the way we tend to think of it is when we feel an issue around a joint, and in your case it's the, 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 the groins, what you're feeling is the muscles at the front, uh, oh, I, haven't, oh, I can't get my bones out, it's too complicated, but um, the muscles at the front of this joint, which it, uh, the hip flexors, the adductors, that sort of thing, but behind it, you've got the, the hamstrings and the buttocks. And it's kind of on the inside. So on the outside of it, you've got the um, rotator muscles, like the, which includes the, the, the deeper buttock, but also the, well, what's it called now? Obturator, gemellus, uh, quadratus of femoris, all the stuff that attaches the, the uh, top of the femur around the bumpy bit sticks out the greater trochanter to the pelvis. So you've got all the stuff on the outside and the stuff on the inside. And if the stuff on the inside, the adductors and hip flexors, are busy carrying your weight inside and front, okay, a very simple way of, a very sort of basic way of, two-dimensional way of seeing it, is you need more strength. On the other side, <laughs> all the muscles that externally rotate the thigh bone by, by pulling the great, greater trochanter and the uh, pelvis together. Yeah. You, need muscle, you need more strength on the outside. Um, directly trying to stretch the uh, inside whilst it's being given the job of supporting your weight, which is what... And that brings me back to what I was saying before. Um, you know, if, if, for example, you know, people feel tight in sitting, the, the groins are tight in sitting, they, they try and stretch it. They try and stretch it. That groin, for whatever reason, and it's a whole body reason, um, is being given the job of supporting the weight of that leg away from the ground. Yeah? That, that's what it's doing. And, you, and, you're, uh, and your feeling is your, my knee should be down there. So therefore, that, that's too short. <laughs> but it's being given the job of supporting your weight. And if you try and stretch it, you're in, you're in a fight with yourself because the, the body is doing one thing and you're trying to um, stretch the muscle that is doing that job. If you want that groin to let go, it needs to let go. It needs to be not given that job. So the, the idea of um opening the groin by doing something like a lunge um is unlikely to succeed it's unlikely to su succeed without this two-dimensional understanding of the joint in that uh, w when you're doing that lunge what's likely to be happening is the groin the adductors and whatnot hip flexors are busy pulling you together to hold you in place and the only solution to that is to find support that doesn't require that okay that's the two-dimensional look at the thing and it, it's valid it's useful um, I, and I won't go into practice yet I'll, I'll refer to that later when we have a go at lunge uh, I presume it's a kneeling lunge. If it's a standing lunge, it's not different, um, really, except um, there's more joints in the way. But um, 
I think I think that's an understandable thing. Um, and m most people understand their yoga in this fashion. You know, you you have uh, agonists and antagonists, and if you're weak on one side or, or overworked on one side, you need the other side to take to do a bit more work until there's balance at the joint, and that should happen automatically. That should be something that happens naturally, and it doesn't. And that takes me to the three-dimensional look at the thing. Okay? Because if you're looking at the source of the issue rather than the symptom, the, the, the tension around the joint, the holding patterns, the strain on one, one side of it, for whatever reason, is a symptom. What's it a symptom of? Well, if you're looking at it two-dimensionally, then you would think it's a symptom of an imbalance of the muscles. But it's not. It's a joint. It's a joint that has a function of m movement and support. Support happens in the third dimension. It happens through that surface. And it's a relationship between what's at one end and what's at the other end. So if you have a joint and above it wants to do something like that, okay, you might be under the impression that the muscles at the front of that arrangement have to be strong. You would feel a, a, a tightness, so you try and stretch it, but then they would have to be stronger. So you would be kind of confused about what needs to happen at that joint. What needs to happen at that joint in this circumstance is the thing above it needs to organize itself so that you could experience support through that joint. So the thing above can rest, give its weight and feel support through it. Now, if underneath that joint, is kind of not responding, if it's not looking for support, if it's sort of hovering, then you'll have a similar issue, as in from underneath there'll be a distortion. See what I mean? The three-dimensional understanding of joints is that they are relationships. They are a relationship to what happens between what is going on be beneath it in relationship to support and what is going on above it in relationship to space. That's how you work out how a joint works, how, how, a, how a joint should be resolved, right? That can, that can work out the two-dimensional distortions, if you like, between this side, that side, front and back, um, by reorganizing the relationship that that joint makes. It's a third dimension of the joint. The person above and the person below, right? Once you can organize the, the uh, and, and it's what above and what below does that causes that relationship. So you have a, with your hip, you have a, you have a foot below you on the ground via a knee joint and you have the rest of the body above you including the pelvis and the core and the breath and your shoulders and head and everything you have the body above that joint in space holding itself putting itself in space and if it's held in space uh, it's a lump that has weight at that point so the first order of business is to get three-dimensional let me uh, put a, a view on where you can see what I'm doing when I'm doing the lunge. Yeah, that'll do. So let's say it's my... Um, is that visible enough? Maybe if I, if I do it this way around, you can sort of... I don't know, really. Um, yeah, let, let's do it this way around. Okay. So... The feeling is these things on the inside of the joint, I don't know whether it's the front or back one you, you're working on to 
open the joint. Um, the feeling is that's where the grip is. Locally, if you don't want the groins to hold you together on the inside, you'll need, in two dimensions, you'll need the inside front, you'll need the outside back to work to push you together rather than the inside groins to pull you together. Right? You just need to emphasize the other side of the joint. So you can just do that. You can tense muscles. You can tense your buttocks. You can work to um, externally rotate the thigh muscles. And it's all very, it feels like tension because it is. <laughs> because you're doing something to the joints. Really what you need to do is to find the three-dimensional nature of that. How, how can you organize that shift around the um, plane of that joint, those joints, so that support is more evenly balanced around it, so that you can get support through it, so that above can rest down through that joint to feel support from the ground, and below can work in a way that balances that feeling and the answer is simply you use your touch the foot at the front the knee at the back foot at the back to widen so you use the purchase of the contact to kind of meet the space either side of you to it's an attempt to kind of stretch the mat between your the points of contact wide and that will cause effort to happen around the outside and behind you a bit more. Okay. That action will give the opportunity for the inside of the joint to let go of its grip because it's not needed to keep you in one piece. So I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. There's an activity of widening and if you're not sure what I mean, I don't mean just pulling wide. It's not a movement. It's a it's an attempt to look for support. So if you had a surface on the outside of that knee, if you had a surface on the outside of that thigh, and you were to widen into those points of contact, that would give you the act of, the, the action that uh, uses contact to reorganize the joint. So that you get support that travels from underneath, from behind, from the side, up into the hip joint, which is actually the direction that the bones kind of want to move. Above it, you need to not be holding yourself away from the ground, not be hanging yourself towards the ground. You need to be in space. And uh, this is where the, the core helps, because if your breathing is habituated to um, carrying the weight of the organs, so if your breathing is a downward pressure, leads to a downward pressure, the weight of the organs adds to the complication of weight bearing in the joints. So here's the stuff above. Forget about the legs for a moment. Now, I will be using them in a minute. But um, if you've got that idea of that sort of radiating out feeling, that way of using the touch to gain support through the hips, uh, then that's fine. But above it, my suggestion, if your spine is used to carrying the weight, which is a function of lifting to breathe, then if you could reorganize this fluid weight by drawing the belly back a bit and seeing if you can get a sense of breathing into the space behind you, it's a relationship to space, and the space either side of you, that's a relationship through your wings, so that you can find a, a, a relationship to the space above you from that with the breath, then the release of the breath will be an upward release within you. So the weight of the organs is no longer bearing down against the hips. By the way, if, you're, if you've got a hard surface um, on that knee, it won't be very pleasant. So you might need to put something soft underneath there. Okay, so you've got the, the thing above the hips one half of the relationship thing above in space needs to find a relationship to space that makes it 
kind of organize itself so it's not heavy against one side of the joint joints and you need a relationship from below so now you activate your feet and you widen from the contact between knees back knee and front foot use the back foot as well and I know it's a lot of work but you're working the two halves of the relationship so that you can release through the joint so landing on your knee and foot should leave you with a sense of support from the ground up through the joint as you relax down through the joints and if you continue to understand the two-dimensional thing as in if your groins are overworking it's because they're doing too much work you work the other side so you widen if you continue to catch your weight differently instead of catching with the groins you catch with the outside of the joints you should be able to release further and further into support now that when you come out of it because you've worked the hips in a way that would have led to a, a less of a strain on the groins you're, you're working towards a balanced reaction at the hips so when you come out of that the result will be your hips your groins will be freer not because you stretch them but because you found support differently the the local sort of efforts that I encourage were to bring that um, to, to move uh, proprioceptive responses towards a more balanced response that was sort of that went with how the joint works but the way you do that is three-dimensionally from above to below from below to above and your relationships to the space all around you will cause you to find a more rela uh, a more balanced relationship around the joints so I know I only did one side and um, normally in a lunge I don't know what you think but um, you might possibly think that you stretch the groin at the back whilst the one at the front gets a bit tense or, or strengthens you know but um, what I experience is both groins from that three-dimensional response both joints uh, both both groins have freed up because they weren't given the inappropriate job of carrying my weight okay there's an example but it's a, a generic principle uh, it's a way of looking at the body that gives you these answers yourself you know so I hope that was useful Jen and anyone else that um, was watching that uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, feel free to um, share this around Facebook for a, for the week or so, a few days. I leave it up um, with anyone that you might find you, you think might benefit. Uh, I've got my uh, what I do. I, all I do now in terms of teaching is I teach one to one, and I do my Saturday morning workshops. I have, I've got a course brewing. It's a, it's a pranayama course, um, but uh, I'm not ready to share it with the world yet. It's, um, it's very personal, it's very direct. It's, it seems to be the answer to everything at the moment. Uh, so um, I, I'll be getting on that soon. If, they, if, you, if you're interested, let me know. That will encourage me to put it together as a course. Um, but uh, yeah, apart from that, it's my Saturday morning uh, retreats. Uh, it's, an, it's a nice way to regularly sort of bring yourself back to your own body and your own self-care uh, every week and um, cheap as chips uh, less than 30 quid to join in person with me um, helping you out directly on screen or, or it's less it's 15 quid if you if you don't need me to see you you know so um, and uh, anyone that turns up gets a download link anyone the books gets a download link so if if you if timing doesn't work for you and you want to catch the workshop you can always book a view only place Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it from me. Um, wishing you a wonderful 2022. Um, I, I hope you get everything that you're looking for for this year. Um, 
Yeah, much love to you all, and I'll see you at the same time, same place next week. Bye now.